Hey, what is up, ladies and gentlemen? My name is Grief Drums, and in today's video, we're going to be breaking down three more tips and tricks from around the Siege community. Um, but these are going to be more focused on pieces of advice. I'm going to start off with breaking down some rotates and good and bad examples of rotate holes. And I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, I already know everything there is to know, but let's take a proper look at it. After that, we're going to go ahead and take a look at kill screens and the information that you can gain from them. And then finally, we're going to go over to Villa and I'm going to showcase a piece of advice that I have been using on a specific site that hopefully you can incorporate into your game that will probably bag you a lot of kills. Now, before we jump right into the video, look at this. This is a fridge from Red Bull. They sent it to me. How cool is that? A huge shout out to them. It's just amazing of them to send that to me. So thank you so much. Now, if you are new here and you don't know, I stream over on Twitch three days a week, Thursdays, Saturdays, and Sundays from around about 8 p.m. BST through to late in the evening. I'd love to see you over there. Just come and hang out. We play some Siege, we play some other games. Just have a bit of a laugh. If you don't already, you can also follow me on Twitter. I post a load of rubbish over there. But it's usually the best way to keep up to date with what's going on with the channel and the live streams themselves. So without any further ado, let's just go ahead and jump straight into today's video. So here we are over on Cafe, and as you will have seen in that previous clip, uh, the dude had put a, a rotate in here, basically. And the issue with that is by coming over to here, you're exposing yourself to multiple areas. You're open to sort of this area over here under the new hatch. You're open to this area through here in the cigar shop, and you can be shot from the skylight. Now, the point of putting in a rotate down here is the fact that if you want to move around in this area, you can obviously hide from all of those respective lines of sight, and you can't be seen from any of them. But the point of the impact is to allow rotates throughout different areas of the map without exposing yourself to multiple angles. So as you pull out through this particular rotate here, I've not exposed myself to any of those angles, but it has allowed me to move around. It's allowed me to get out of dodge, and it's allowed me to then come and peek out in different areas and expose myself to limited angles one at a time. As a result, very often, this line of sight is reinforced. And sometimes you'll even see teams put a mirror window on there so that you can do exactly that. You can move around in here and you can move through this section here. Obviously, if this rotate wasn't here, the only option would be to come through the doorway in which, as I say, you're limiting um, how much cover you've got and how exposed you are to the various different angles that are available to the attackers. Now, the same can be said for downstairs on the basement, on the uh, basement, the bakery. On this floor down here, you want to be able to have rotates to move in and out. So depending on what you're doing, if you want to get into the bakery itself from the kitchen, your only option really is to come through here or to push the long hallway. So very often you'll see teams put in like a rotate down here so that they can move into the bakery with limited exposure to the various angles. If you are holding the bakery itself, you can contest, and then as and when you need to, you can fall back into the site and hide behind the reinforced walls. So the next rotate we're going to look at is over on Theme Park. I was playing as Mirror, and I was pretty much going through my full setup, trying to organize everything so I was ready for the round as it started, only to find that a rotate had been put in. Now, I want to make it quite clear. The rotate itself, it isn't one that I would particularly like to use. However, that doesn't make it completely wrong. Now, I want to make it quite clear that I'm not bashing the dude for putting in this rotate. However, the difficulty I have with it is the fact that him putting in that rotate without sort of questioning anyone in a bit of a random spot and then not playing around it is the real issue. Now, you need to be responsible for the rotates and the lines of sight you put in. If you're not planning on playing around it, if you're not planning on using it, or if people on your team aren't aware it's going to be there, is it really the best thing to do? Do you need to put in that line of sight? You know, I mean, if people don't know about it, you could be exposing them to different angles and more problems than your initial plan had set up. So it's at this point in the clip that I realize where the rotate is. I sort of turn around and start questioning it and think, you know what? My entire setup now is very, very limited. And I'm going to go ahead and explain why, but... It's just so frustrating to me to see a rotate put here and not further over to the right. Now, with Mirror's Vector being what it is, I am reasonably limited. But if you go ahead and zoom right the way in here, 
you can see all the way through to the break room itself through in bunks. Now, that is a really long line of sight, and it would be reasonably good if I was an attacker. Unfortunately, I've got a limited zoom scope, so I'm not going to be able to do a massive amount. But as you can see, um, the rotate has been put in on this wall, and I'm playing as mirror just inside of the office, trying to hold a mirror window here. Now, if any attacker comes into the break room, they have a line of sight all the way through to the bathroom over by cash. Now that is a long line of sight. And with the attackers having ACOGs two times and now three times scopes without even thinking about Carly, they can cut the entire site in half and pretty much stop any movement within the actual bomb site itself. By playing as an attacker all the way back here, as you can see with this ACOG, look at the line of sight I've got. Anyone that's moving around inside of there, I'm just going to be able to lean out and quite quickly take them out. So it just goes to show how this rotate is actually working negatively against us and not allowing us to rotate anywhere at all without getting shot. Now, if this wall had been done instead and we put the rotate in just over here, that will mean that we can actually move around as mirror inside of the site because the line of sight from the break room is a lot more limited. I can move around, I can move into this new rotate to get different lines of sight without exposing myself to the long line of sight from the break room. The biggest piece of advice I'm going to give for all of this is don't just put a rotate in for the sake of it. Don't do it because you think you need to rotate between two bomb sites. Actually stop and think about it. Don't put one somewhere just because you've seen it before in a video or something. Try and actually think, what lines of sight am I exposing people to? Am I going to be utilizing a long line of sight? If I am, do I need to make other people aware of it and figure out what is going to occur should I die? Me putting in some crazy long line of sight is amazing as long as either everyone knows about it or alternatively it's not going to expose anyone to any danger should I die in that area. Have a think about it. Have a think about the rotates that you currently use and have a think about why you use them and what angles you are opening yourself up to. Reloading, Next up today, I want to discuss probably one of the most important screens that you don't pay attention to. On Rainbow Six. Now, this particular screen that I'm talking about is when you've just died and it shows you who killed you. And the amount of times that people, I will say to them, where'd you die from? They'll be like, I don't know, I had to watch the replay. Well, you don't actually have to watch the replay to figure out where you died. Because as you'll see here, walking through this corridor is Ash. I die right in the middle of the corridor to a Nitro from a bandit that is downstairs. Now, I can tell exactly which room he is in. He is in the bush ranger room directly below me. And as you can see from the hole in the roof shown in the background, he's quite literally placed the nitro on the ceiling above him and then set it off. Now, if Bandit had moved to the other side of the map, he would be shown on that kill screen right here where he pressed his phone. So if he's off hiding in uh, the piano area or if he's in electrical on the other side of the map, when he sets that nitro off and I die to the nitro, I'm going to know exactly where he is and I can pass that information on. Now, the clip in the background that I'm showcasing here is one in which I absolutely whiffed my shots. I mean, the whole thing, I should have been holding the flank. I completely messed it up. But it kind of showcases what I'm talking about here. So I'm jumping onto my drone. As I say, I'm holding the flank to make sure no one comes around these top stairs. And I see the lesion creeping up into the upper arcade. So I come up to peek him. He's a bit further than I expected him to be. And I just miss all my shots and die. And it's unfortunate, it really is. But once we get to this screen right here, I have just gained so much information, it's unreal. I know exactly how much health lesion is on. I know exactly where he killed me from. He killed me from just next to this arcade machine. And if you pay attention to the left-hand side of the screen, you will notice that Jaeger is also there. Now, in these moments when you die, you can either sit there and you can scream and shout and say, you know what, I'm really angry that I died. It was a headshot. I should have killed, you know, all that kind of stuff. Or you can take the information that you get from this kill screen right here and you can feed that into your team. Now, if I'm quick enough, I can tell everyone that is down by the barrels that's trying to breach that wall that not only is Legion pushing around, but Jaeger is also in Upper Arcade as well. And if you go ahead and look at the amount of people that were still alive just before I died... You'll notice that JD had just killed someone. We'd already killed a spawn peeker and we know two people are in upper arcade. So only one person is on site, meaning you can quite simply push through into the site and gain control. You can use this kind of intel on so many different occasions. Um, unfortunately, it's, it's, I'm only going to get these when I die. So these are like daft moments when I do die. But this particular shot right here is going to tell you exactly how many people are up by the console office on the roof. 
Pay particular attention to this. Concentrate on this screen because this is the most important screen to assist your teammates when you die. Now, the very final thing I want to cover today is this setup on Villa. Now, I am aware that we are over the 10 minute mark, so I'm going to be quite quick with this. I'm only going to showcase it pretty speedily. But you'll notice that we are defending trophy statue and I'm trying to cover the master bedroom. And I'm doing that from downstairs in the dining room. So oh by opening God, the hatch, so I can actually see onto that window. And then by utilizing an impact grenade the just here, I can see onto the single window in the master bed. If you hide behind the sofa, the hatch can't really see your feet and you're reasonably protected. But by moving around in this area, I can protect downstairs. I can stop people getting stuff off the walls from below. And I can also control both of these entry points from the dining room itself before rotating back up to the site. Now, you do have to keep your ears turned on and pay attention, keep your head on the swivel to what's going on around you, but this can be an extremely beneficial place to set up if you are holding trophy and statue. I'm afraid that's going to be it for today's video. Hopefully, there's something in there that you can take away, and, you know, hopefully there's something that if you didn't know it, you do now and you can incorporate it into your game. It'll hopefully help you improve. If you did enjoy the video, please consider hitting that thumbs up. If you don't already, Make sure to subscribe. And if you're interested in just raw gameplay, I have a second YouTube channel, which is called Grief Drums Plays, in which I literally just upload gameplay. So if you're interested in seeing that kind of content, make sure to check that out as well. Grief Nation, thank you very much for staying till the end. I will see you beautiful people next time.